Oh, hey guys, what are we doing? Going to Melbourne! Going to Melbourne for the first time, Australia! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> That's right, we're going on our first ever trip to Australia. Here we go. While I can't say that Melbourne has ever been a city on our bucket list, going to Australia certainly has been. But it wasn't until recently that a really cool opportunity came our way. Through life in Japan, we've made some new connections in the land down under, and now they're helping us arrange our first trip. Here we go, huh? <laughs> nah, I mean, huh? There it is, 720, and it's check-in B-C-E-H. Okay, let's go. The flight to get to Melbourne from Tokyo is quite unique. Unique because most flights out of here don't take the route we're about to take and don't suffer the same jet lag. Are you excited for the trip coming up? Yes. Yes? Flying all night too. But no jet lag to Australia. That might be one of the best parts, huh? No jet lag. No jet lag. There's two Qantas planes, I don't know which one is ours. For our whole flight to Australia, we will only have a time difference of two hours, and that's because it's summer in Melbourne. There's our airplane. All right, guys, are you excited? Are you ready? Yeah. Now it's time to find our seats and settle in for a long night on the plane. Hey, girls, you ready to do this thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so we watched a few movies and then spent the rest of the night trying to sleep on the plane. In the morning, we would emerge in the land down under. Well, guys, welcome to Australia. First time for all of us. Oh, my goodness. What a rainy reception. <laughs> All right, we're here in Melbourne. We made it. Oh, yeah. Now, just waiting to get picked up by our friends and getting some coffee. Yum. Having hot chocolate, waiting for activity. Oh, it's a nice hot drink. Good. It's not Starbucks, though, is it? They don't have Starbucks here, I don't think. This is egg we didn't wait long for our friends to pick us up. All right, here we are. We are. We are moving. They took us to where we would be staying while in Melbourne. You get a little $20 gift card to spend at Woolies. Oh, look at that. Come on, stop it. Benefit of a graphic designer. Right? Yes. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> Rach and Jess had things prepared to a level I had never seen before, and we could tell we were in for a great time here in Melbourne. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, yeah. What? Oh yeah, and then there's Aussie slang. Oh yeah, just for Oh me. yes. Alright, alright, some Aussie slang. Ace! Excellent! Arvo! Afternoon? Is that how you say it? Arvo? Arvo, An yep. Arvo, yeah. Arvo, yep. Oh, this is brilliant. Yeah. Look at that, Sierra. That's oh, awesome. These, these are converters. So I can plug stuff in. Yeah, those, okay. that's presents for mommy and daddy. Soon we're out to stock up the fridge. Anna, what did we do? Came to Australia and then what? Groceries. groceries. <laughs> Buy some groceries. <laughs> then it was back to the apartment to settle in. We had some big guests coming in the next day and wanted to be ready. We had such a busy week leading up to this trip. On Sunday, led worship at Paz Church, and then we came, we got on a plane, and we flew all night to get here. And it's the middle of the summer. Actually, the Australian Open is about to happen here. So the city is just buzzing with Australian Open kind of stuff. Got settled into our the place where we're staying here. Rach and Jess are just treating us like kings here. It's awesome. Even though there's no jet lag, we were feeling the effects of having little sleep the night before. We took it easy, but eventually we wanted to head out, explore, and find some dinner. What time is it? It is like 5.30. We decided it was time to venture out. Here we go, we rested up a little bit, we're heading out. Gonna check out the area. It didn't take us long to find a big shopping area with some fun stores to explore. Joshua, what did we see? Lego. Lego place. Oh, sure enough. Lego store. It's real. And it's happening now. 
What did you find here, Becca? It's all Lego. Oh my goodness, you're right. Oh, <laughs> dude. Look, this briefcase fell open. There's donuts and pizza. <laughs> oh, did it work? No. Uh, okay. What's going up here? Life in Japan. Life in Japan is going to make its mark right here. Nice. For dinner, the kids wanted to try Australian McDonald's, but Daddy wanted to try something more local. All right. Daddy did some schnitz. Schnitz. I think that's how they say it. Schnitz. S-C-H-I-S. Schnitz. Australian McDonald's, dude. What do you think? It's supposed to be that good. <laughs> Maybe. This is a popular type of drink here in Australia, and I really like it. Lemon, lime, and bitters, and these sandwiches are just next level. After dinner, it was all we could do to stay up until it got dark. In Melbourne summer, that's like 9 o'clock. The next day, we had big plans. Not only will we meet up with Rach and Jess, but Ruth's parents were flying in from South America, and we couldn't wait to see them. Wow, guys. Welcome to Melbourne. Welcome to Melbourne. <gasps> Look who's with us, Vava. And Vava came in early this morning. Ah! Whoa, guys. It almost looks like the Amazon River, doesn't it? <laughs> That's like the same color as the Amazon. Whoa. This is really cool. Big thumbs up, huh? <laughs> Here we go, National Gallery of Victoria. Okay, so early this morning, mom and dad, Vovó and Vovó, came in from Brazil and they got to see the place where we're staying and now we're heading out to do a couple things here on our first full day in Melbourne. It's beautiful, wonderful weather, super clear and cool. I love it. The day started off inside the gallery in the kids section where we were immediately transported to the beach. Here the kids can learn about keeping the beach clean and about sea life. It was a fun way to get things going. You found something. Where are you going to put it, Sarah? Just leave Australia is here going. We're going to bin it. We're going to bin it? We're going to bin it. Let's bin it. You got it. Cleaned up. Way to go. Clean up your room like that, dude. Found the trash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Auntie Rach, what are you going to draw? Oh, it's me. <laughs> but it wasn't just Rach that was using her artistic skills. Oh, Sarah, how cute. We're floating on the water. And Rebecca's really gone for it there. Oh, look at that. What are those fish doing? Oh, that's cute. That. <laughs> look that's at that. <laughs> all right, all right. Look at Joshua, dude. He is just been. A beach cleaning machine! Next we got to see some robot dogs in action and they took a particular liking to the kids. Hello. Hi. Looking at you guys. Yeah. Straight up. It's like, hey, are you guys American? Next we made our way through the main galleries. It's amazing what things are considered art these days. Even a banana duct tape to a wall. Right. Okay. You have to change it every day or? Somebody, just get, somebody get to eat it. That's right. I want to eat it. <laughs> I'm hungry. But there were a number of truly interesting displays, including our personal favorite near the end. <laughs> All right. We even got our hand at recreating some art. Okay, now look at your Dude, he's got amazing arm strength, huh? He just hangs up there all day, no problem. Oh, this is really cool. Look at this. That's Japanese artist. <gasps> this is Japanese artist? What? Azuma Makoto. What? Oh, this is so cool. I knew I loved it. <laughs> like, I walked in here, I was like, this is awesome. We really enjoyed seeing these familiar Japanese flowers and plants perfectly encased in resin. The attention to detail was exquisite, and we recognized a lot of the plants. Sometimes Ruth would be like, that grows on our sidewalk. The amount of work that went into this display is mind-blowing. Doesn't quite compare to the banana duct tape to the wall, does it? This is amazing. This is amazing here. Oh, Ruth. Look at this one with the roots. The sunflower with the roots. 
Oh, very cool. So you have to be meticulous to do something like this. Look at these strawberries, how real they are. But it wouldn't take long for things to get silly again. What's going on over here? It's a talking rat. It's a talking rat? My goodness, what is he talking about? Something. But I see rats, I kill them. <laughs> Art is fun, but what Melbourne really loves is breakfast and coffee. And here to tell us more is our local friend Jess. Obviously, all the regular coffee is awesome in Melbourne, but you definitely do have to try a magic. Uh, that's something that's uh, quite unique. Oh boy. Part of the world. Here it is. This is the magic this, here, right? This is the magic. All right. So I'm going to try it. Here. What's the verdict? Here's the it's good. Here's okay, the what's it's here's the what explanation. It is a double ristretto shot of espresso topped with steamed and rich It's good coffee, that's, that's <laughs> what I know. Melbourne sure loves its brunch culture and cafes. And next, we would go see the heart of it in person. Well, this is De Grave Street. De Grave Street, huh? Yeah, they've done it up real nice. Let's check it out. Restaurants, shops, and cafes line the street with food calling out from each shop. We got the lay of the land and then decided on what we wanted to do for lunch. <laughs> it looks amazing. I think I would eat anything in any one of these places. We decided to go with dessert first and then buy our lunch to go. Dark chocolate, yum. Get it, Anna. Oh yeah, ice cream before lunch. What is going on? Sarah's getting her mint. Oh yeah. Is it good, Sarah? Minty goodness. We grabbed lunch at the cafe that had first caught our eye. Then the kids picked up something that caught their eye. Okay, we got our sandwiches. Oh. And what was the snack that we got that everyone agreed on? Everyone agreed on it. Cheese. <laughs> the cheese balls. Everyone agreed. But there was still one place left for us to visit. This place in honor of Mama Chun. Oh my goodness. Look at this, like, baking central. It's almost like there's a big tennis tournament about to happen or something. Well, Ruth got something. Oh. What is it that we got here? I don't I don't know. I mean, I know because I ordered it. Oh, I cannot pronounce the names. Oh my goodness. That looks incredible. <laughs> and with that, we would catch our first tram in Melbourne, heading back to the apartment so we could enjoy all the things we just bought. We're gonna grab the tram and hit Latro. Right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Let's get on. Right downtown Melbourne, there is a free zone where anyone can ride the tram. And so we took advantage of it to get home even faster. They sit right there. The tram rides along the center of the main avenues along tracks that remind me of scenes from San Francisco. It's like a cross between a train and a bus, and there just so happens to be a stop outside our place. Look at these sandwiches for lunch. <laughs> Good for you. Good on you. Good on ya. Good on ya. Good on ya. Good on ya. Good on ya, mate. Good on ya, mate. That was actually kind of good. We spent the rest of the afternoon playing games, practicing our Australian English, and getting rested up. Our next outing was to the Melbourne Museum. And this time, Ruth's dad would also be joining us. It's a special treat to have them with us for this trip. Yeah. All right, we're gonna see beneath the stream and landscape. Watch your watery step. You can see all the roots and all the fish swimming around in there. It's almost like an aquarium, huh, Sarah? Little turtle on top. Aw, sure enough. Where? Okay. Sarah, what are you looking forward to here? The movie. The movie. Oh, something else too? Just the dinosaur bones. <laughs> the dinosaur bones. What about you, Joshua? Are you documenting our journey? I'm just taking pictures and I, I just like doing that. Okay. Sarah wouldn't have to wait long to get her wish. You. Whoa, look at the pterodactyl. Well, that was experience since like at the No joke, look how big it is. Wait, is it that big? That's yeah, wouldn't that be crazy, dude? But you saw one of those coming, you'd be like, uh-uh, I'm gonna get the picture. All right, you get it, dude. Whoa, this is cool. You get an idea of the size of these things. 
me to act just... What would you do? Scream. <laughs> and it make them, their ears break so they run away. Oh, I see. It surely would have been something to see one of these in person when they were alive. Ooh. Boy. What do you think, Sarah? Creepy. Creepy? Just wants to play with you guys. We headed down to the first floor of the museum, where one of Melbourne's premier dinosaur attractions waited for us. Oh, he gets to walk through this. Here we go. Sarah, are you? Can you just give me the video later, dude? All right. Josh was in training here. Whoa. So the ground is cool, too. Oh, my, Sarah, don't look. No, but it's... Oh. You got to see parts of Australia that others don't. That's right. Who knew they had dinosaurs in Australia? The moment when the lightning came. Oh my, the lightning moment, huh? Three, two, one. Oh. Whoa. Here it is. The triceratop bones. Oh, and the different parts of the bones. This is called the fossilized bone. Oh yeah, you can control it, huh? That's cool. And with that, we said goodbye to Melbourne's museum and took a nice stroll through Carlton Gardens. It might be summer in Melbourne, but we sure caught some great weather while we're here. It's not nearly as hot as it could be this time of year. This is wild. Look at that. That's a fern and a half. That yeah, looks like it might swallow you up if you get three bones. No joke. <laughs> Is getting a picture. That might be the good place for it. The weather was perfect, the sky was clear, and it was a perfect day for a walk through the park. What'd you do here, Becca? Melbourne. You drew one of the buildings here? And there it is, over there. Uh, did you like your version? But after all that culture, the kids needed to get out some of their energy, and a nearby park did just the trick. Anna's up with the skyscrapers. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Soon, the kids found some swings that were apparently made just for them. <laughs> Dad, <I'm not> the <laughs> <laughs> but trying to keep the perfect timing was a big challenge. Oh, look at this! Perfectly timed! And boom! <laughs> it was great to start to get a feel for Melbourne and what it's all about. And although we were having a great time here as a family, we've come here for more than just a vacation. There's a huge church conference that happens here that attracts people from all over the world. And this year will be our first time to participate. The conference was about to start, but even before it did, we got to enjoy some other fun parts of the city. It's so steep! Wow, good job! All that play had got us hungry. Hungry enough for some unusually large pizza. What an arm workout. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Thank you. Here it comes. Mama Chun dishing it out. Oh, oh, Sarah, she's getting it. She got that big old pepperoni there. Yum. Oh, yeah, dude. Get it. Get it. That looks good, dude. I probably have the best seat in the house right here. Check this out. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, I was told we need to come into the bathroom here because what in the world? Look at those tires for sinks. That's cool, huh? Cool and funny and kind of weird. weird. The first night of the conference arrived and we made our way down to Melbourne's convention center for the main event. Planet Shakers has a number of songs that we sing back in Tokyo at Paz Church, and it's exciting to finally visit a Planet Shakers conference in person. Presents. Let's go. It's so quiet. It's so quiet. And it's so long. Well, it's going to get louder. Don't worry. And it is long. 
Every time I visit a large church, I get inspired. I can just imagine Paz Church doing something like this in Tokyo someday. Oh boy. Everyone really got into it, and we had such a good time over several days of conference. Joshua even broke out a number of his dance moves. But all that conference can make you hungry, and Jess had the perfect place for us to try. Wait, it's a shot. Eating a fart. Look at these fish and chips. Oh my goodness. And nothing goes with local food like some local shops. We have some souvenirs to buy after all. All right, what do we have here, Sarah? Oh my goodness, how cool is that? Yeah, it's Muffin. Muffin. Don't eat it. We certainly got a bunch of local shopping in, but it wasn't just local shopping that got our attention. Fruit. Where are we? We got Costco in Melbourne. <laughs> they have Krispy Kremes here. Did you see that? Krispy Kremes in every 7 Eleven. Seven Eleven here. The hunt was on for souvenirs we could share with the kids' friends back in Japan. Ruth, what are some of the differences you're noticing? They have very much more Western <laughs> style of things for bigger homes. So. I can't take it back with me. Plus, the voltage is wrong. That's right. Not everything out there needed electricity, but it would sure need space. Okay, 60,000. 60,000 piece puzzle. When would you do it? Size of table would you need? <laughs> 8 foot by 29. 2.5 oh meters by 8 point almost 9 meters. Where in the world? We turned our attention to some more practical things to take back with us. Let's see, Ruth. Oh yeah. We grabbed some groceries for an upcoming excursion out of town and then made our way to the checkout. So Ruth, cheapest exit ever from Costco? Mom bought. Mom bought. <laughs> Quite a view from this Costco though, huh? My goodness. The next day we would head out of Melbourne for what would be one of the biggest highlights of the whole trip. A day of encountering Australian wildlife out in nature. Today we've come out to Moonlit Sanctuary to see the Australian animals here. We're excited for this. Here we go. Electric fence, guys. Let's not touch the fence or pee on the fence. No peeing on the fence. Look, your first encounter right there. Hello. I think I saw a bee right there. <laughs> Sarah, over there, all of you like just like him. But it wouldn't take long for us to encounter some real Australian animals. See over there under the tree? Look. That thing. Look at that thing. Do you see him? Oh, here he comes. Yeah, dude. Oh, my. Oh, he's cute. Oh, my goodness. I think he's coming, Anna. The hairy wombat. It's so cute. It's like a mix of a pig and a piggy nut. Like a rabbit. Oh yeah, <laughs> a pig and a rabbit combined. That's cool though, huh? I'm going to hole. Yes. He didn't go in the hole. Oh, he's going to make the whole loop. That's oh, this map. That's right. Moonlit Sanctuary would turn out to be a great place to see all kinds of Australian wildlife up close and personal. Oh, there's a bunch of them. I've never seen oh, okay. a turtle with that. Look at no joke. It's just staring at us. My goodness. That is a long neck. <laughs> oh, that's coming for you. Hello. We don't want to find out the hard way. Like an ostrich with bad hair day. Yeah, right. He'll peck at you. Watch it. It's kind of way. This is cool, though. They come right up to you. Koala. 
do want to see the koala. We do. Oh, look at him. Oh, how cute. cute. He's like, if I stay really still, you can't see me. But your ears are kind of telling that. That's right. That's what gives it away, doesn't it? Petting the koalas over there. Look, so, oh, there. It's what a, tired. What a difficult life. Yeah. What a life. Wow. I'm talking with the bird right now. What's the bird saying? Well, it's I'm saying I love you so much uh, and you are very beautiful and I'm from that too. Oh, that's nice. Having the feel that we were out in the Australian outback really added to the overall charm of the whole place, even when what we were seeing wasn't charming at all. Uh, and right there. My goodness, look at Oh, I thought that green rope was the snake. Oh, I see it. It's down under those leaves, yeah. Do you see it? Wow, Cody. It's hiding in the bush. Freshwater crocodile. Can you see the tails? <laughs> but soon we'd be able to interact with some of Australia's most famous animals. They're wallabies. They look like ducks to me. Yeah. So that's different from the kangaroo? I guess. Look, Dad's look. Oh, he was running and jumping. Australia is full of kangaroo and wallaby. Still, it is pretty special to be able to see these guys up close. You gotta be real slow. Slow. Slowly, JJ. Slowly. Oh, very good. There you go, guys. Look at that. He's very friendly. Of course, he's friendly. Uh, we've got a following. How fun. Oh, oh yeah. Jay's very friendly. Oh, Ben. Is it going to kick me? No, he won't. Oh, hey, girls. Hey, guys. Uh, look at this. Wow. And the encounters didn't stop. Gentle. <laughs> How cool is that? Great. <laughs> Dad. They're so soft. They can do five meters high in a single jump, these oh, things. Really? Yep. This is... Coco, look! Oh, how fun is that? Oops. Oh, Oops. He, ran away. Hey, hey. he ran away. He's like, later guys. So what do you think of this place so far, dude? Fun. Huh? What's your favorite part so far about it? Feeding. Feeding the animals? Any animal in particular? Wallaby. The wallaby? Yeah, in Japanese it's called wallaby. But some of the Australian wildlife looks somewhat familiar. Nice. And one thing we didn't imagine was all the different types of birds there are, or how fun it would be to feed them all. Look at that, that's beautiful. But all of that feeding made us ready for a lunch of our own. All right. You've been running around. We're enjoying lunch here. And what, Sarah, is the breaking news? Anna says that was her best burger she ever ate. What? Is that serious? It helps because she's starving. <laughs> Hunger is the best spice, is that how they say it? After lunch, we would venture on to Phillip Island, where the kids would attempt a high ropes course. All right, guys. But it wasn't just the kids. Vava would go, too. How's it going up there? Look, it's you, Anna. No problem. You hate these? Oh, you got it. Becca's going on a crazy one too here. Here comes Bubba across it. As everyone pushed themselves, they found they could not only do it, but have fun with it too. This is Amazon life training here. Yeah. 
What's the weather like up there? Sunny? Here comes Anna Cakes. The dude is just killing it. Way to go, dude! And Baba is right behind him, following him. That's amazing. Having conquered the challenge, Becca turned to dancing on the high ropes. Very nice. Flossing. <laughs> But some of the best views of the trip we would get out at the end of Phillip Island, where later that night we would witness things we've never seen before. Oh my goodness. To the left. To the left. Here, to the left. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, he's looking our way, isn't he? If you kept your eyes open, you could easily see wildlife everywhere. It's so crazy to see this right out. Deb, show us how big you can see. Kangaroos and whatever those birds are. Australia is wild. Yeah. Look at a car in the wild. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. It's just flying. But it wasn't just wildlife on Phillip Island that got our attention as we looked over the far southern ocean towards Tasmania and Antarctica. The wind is super strong. It's a long ways down there, huh? Roger, Roger. Do not drop your camera. Do not drop your camera. Get the shot, Anna. Did you get it? <laughs> Ooh, a panoramic. Nice. Wow, this is beautiful here. Whoa, Becca. All right, let me get my phone out. Soon we would come upon the main attraction for us on Phillip Island, a nightly natural occurrence that has got to be one of the most unique things I've ever seen. Aww. Here's what we just drove around on this tip down all the way over here which is where we're gonna see the penguins then come out here in just a little bit. Thousands of little penguins make their way out of the ocean and up the beach to their home each night at dusk, and tonight we're gonna to witness it for ourselves. So you can't actually film after sunset here, but I'm going to see if I can find some footage here on YouTube somewhere <laughs> to show you what it's like when they come up. We think all these little burrows here are where the penguins come and they're gonna sleep. Wow. Here we go, look at this. Here's where we're gonna watch it all happen. Hey Becca, do you believe the penguins are gonna come right there? Right there. Okay, dude, we're about to see the penguins, huh? It's gonna be cool. They're gonna walk up right here, huh? Yeah, but bad news you guys cannot see it. No, it's kind of like the Master Ninja, right? Remember that? They couldn't see that either. Unfortunately, Penguin Parade doesn't have any good videos to share, but what they did have was some pictures that really capture the experience. For as it gets dark, thousands of little penguins come up out of the ocean in small packs, march across the beach, and make their way right up to where we were sitting. As they bumble and waddle around, we could have reached out and touched them if we had wanted to, but they warn you that they have a strong bite. The whole experience was quite amazing and was the best way to end our day encountering Australian wildlife. With only a little time left in Melbourne, we still had some big surprises left, and one of them happened as we visited Rach and Jess. Oh my goodness, Sarah, what's going on? Whoa! Give you a little rock this way, and this way, and this way. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> we weren't able to escape all of the Australian summer weather as the last day really started to boil, but we were able to take the edge off. What do we got here, Jesse? We, you got... I'm having the ice latte. I personally oh. think it's really yummy. You... But you, on the other hand... Oh, I went all in. Treat. 
I got ice cream in my coffee. My cold coffee with ice cream. I'm all about this. Today it actually feels like Australia. So, right? It does. But a real treat happened back at Jess and Rach's house where the girls got to paint in Rach's personal art studio. Wow. Getting some art lessons here. Auntie Rach. With Auntie Rach. Is this the process that you do with the big ones too? Yeah. Look at that. Whoa. Sarah, I see some of your favorite colors have made their way into your painting. It's all about what you like. That's right. Doesn't have to look like anybody's. Becca even developed her own painting process. Yep, nice. Wow, guys, look at this. I'm actually choosing the color there is blindfold. No error. Look at that. Ooh. This. Okay, let's use this cutting now. Like too much on. It's okay. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. It. So far, it's the easiest thing ever. Nice. Good job. Well, that is so cool. <gasps> wow, Sarah, that's cool. This is beautiful. This would sell, actually. Wait, you have one that would sell here? Yeah, we have one here. Oh, wow, it's look at that. Good sell job. it and help with your ticket for airfare here. <laughs> but the last moment surprises kept coming. This time, a birthday boy would get a surprise party thanks to Auntie Rach. Okay. Oh, here, one for me, one for me. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joshua. Happy birthday to you. Get it, dude, get it. Yeah! Look who's on the cake. Cut the cake. Cut. Oh, yeah! Hey. All right. I know what it is. Whoa, dude! Super Mario. Something. Oh, Mega what? 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 Mega what? The matching Mega. game. Oh, dude. A matching game. Joshua, was that a good surprise? Check. Yeah. First birthday in Australia. And Becca got to jam with Jesse, one of Planet Shaker's guitarists, on one of their most famous songs, one that we love to use back in Japan. But for us, the biggest surprise of the whole trip came that evening. So Rachel organized for us, we didn't know she was doing this, she organized for us a super special dinner at a nice restaurant here in Melbourne. And she got a bunch of our friends without us knowing it. She contacted our friends and they donated so that we could come here and eat here tonight. Whoa, what a special treat. While Rach and her friend hung out with the kids, we enjoyed a wonderful steak dinner, compliments of our friends. The potatoes, oh, look at this, oh my. It's exceeding like I got that. What a special treat. Okay, let's eat. But there was another surprise in store, one that Rach had not planned. There's drones going up outside. There's gonna be a drone show while we're still finishing. Wow. Ruth, it's just for our last night in Melbourne. How about that? That is the prime seat. The prime seat. I'm telling you, it's not just every day. This is not just everyday kind of stuff right here. Wow. Look how they coordinate it with that train. <laughs> Life is full of moments, good and bad, special and mundane. But sometimes you find yourself in a moment when you pinch yourself and think, is this really happening to me right now? It's a whale. That's how our time in Melbourne felt, thanks to friends Jess and Rach and their amazing church at Planet Shakers. And as we took in the last evening in Melbourne, we geared up mentally for heading back to Japan. We love living in Japan and are looking forward to a lot more good surprises this year as we keep on keeping on. A stingray and dessert has come. A drone show and dessert. Dessert in a drone show. There's our airplane, Sarah, sitting in the rain. 
our departure back to Tokyo looked a lot like our arrival. A rare rainy and cool summer morning in Melbourne. It was just the right send off for our time in Australia. Next time, we'll see you back in Japan on Life in Japan. Bye bye.